uh, I have no idea if that's going to actually backfire on Channel 4 or if it will have the effect of further damaging my reputation. I mean, I know the Canadian media has picked up the victimized Kathy Newman yeah. narrative and run with it yeah. as well. Well, as well the they're, they're certainly trying. The Independent, I think, was a piece today, has a subtitle, when white men feel they're when white men feel they are losing power, any level of nastiness is possible. Yeah. In the struggle to, to regain the Yeah, I know. That, was, that was definitely one of the most appalling headlines yeah. that I've ever seen a credible news organization produce. And they, like, see, one of the things I pointed out in my book, in, in 12 Rules for Life, is that as a clinician, talking to many hundreds of people for many thousands of hours and watching how things unfold in their life from the earliest stages of their childhood memories to their current state of life and, and into the future. One thing I've learned is that no one ever gets away with anything. And so this reporter has made a kind of statement, a kind of provocative statement, and yeah. he or she doesn't understand that there will be consequences of that. And, and perhaps not the sort of consequences that the author will tie back to that statement, but that's the sort of, that's a, that's a statement that you only make if you are very historically ignorant or very uncautious, incautious, or if there's a very dark part of you hoping things will go very wrong very soon. And I would say that there's a reasonable possibility that things are going to go very wrong very soon. For whom? For all of us. For all of us. None of what's happening in this polarized atmosphere is amusing to me. What happened, <clears throat> see, even with the Channel 4 interview, you know, and maybe I was a bit self-congratulatory, let's say, when I made my sort of satirical gotcha statement. I'm not, and, and then I would say you could read what happened with Channel 4 as a victory for me and as a loss for Kathy. Now, depends on what she was aiming at. If she was aiming at three million views on YouTube in two days, then it's not a loss. You know, and for me, it's like, well, it, my book went up to number two in, on Amazon.com in the US the next day, right? It's number one in Canada, it's number three in the UK, all on Amazon. I couldn't have asked for more publicity, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I could also be sitting back and saying, well, you know, she tried to, she, my, a person who regarded herself as my ideological opponent tried to go after my philosophy and my reputation on national TV, failed brutally and has been taken apart for it. It's like, this is a good day, but I don't regard it as a good day. I don't think it's a good day. As what do you regard it? I think that it's evidence of the instability of the times that we're in. It would have been much better for me and for everyone else if what we would have had was a real conversation. So, so it's not good. Yeah. It's not good. And I asked Kathy in a variety of different ways now if she would sit down and have an actual conversation because the right way for this to end is not for me to declare victory because I don't regard it as a victory. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that I would have like to have the tables turned. I'm not saying that I would have been happy with a loss, yeah. but what happened in there was not an optimized victory. Um, what we need to do, what would be best, is if she would sit down with me for about an hour. On camera as well? On camera, where we could actually have a discussion. So what you're saying, that although it might look as a, as a, as a victory for you and, and, the, and the attention it has generated. It's not a healthy victory. It's not a healthy victory. Right. And, and Taking back to that, you said that it's actually a sign of the times where things could go really wrong for all of us really soon. Yeah, we're, we're playing with fire. Yeah, what do you mean by this? Can you, can you elaborate? Well, things go wrong in cultures all the time, right? You get, you get the polarization increases until people start to act it out. You know, I mean... I'll give you an example. You know, I always pay attention to what happens at the back of my mind, to the bottom of my mind, let's say. And um, what I learned from Carl Jung, for example, one thing was that if you l watch what happens in your imagination while you're speaking, or while things are happening to you, you'll see little dreamlike fragments happening all the time. Mm -hmm. 
they're not in words, they're really more like, they're more like brief dreams. Jung thought we were dreaming all the time, even when we were awake. And, you know, today I was reviewing maybe 10 or 11 of these newspaper articles that had played this twisty game and accused me of like sicking my internet trolls on the poor hapless journalist. And I thought, this was the dark part of me, right? That's the shadow part, thought. If I wanted to sick my internet trolls on Channel 4, then there'd be nothing but broken windows and riots. And then there's a little part of me that thinks, wouldn't that be fun? Right, and that's where we're at. It's like, because I'm a reasonable person, a very reasonable person, but even though I can... you these thoughts in the back of your mind? Oh, yes. Yeah. And I pay attention to them because I know that they're, they're part of the collective unconscious, right? Yeah. They're the shadow part. And yeah, yeah. when there's part of me thinking, well, wouldn't that just be perfectly goddamn delightful? Then there's lots of people who are not only thinking that way sometimes, but thinking that way all the time. And they're just waiting for that to be the proper response. You see this with the Antifa yeah. violence in the United States and with the Charlottesville thing as well. So, but basically what you're saying is that when you have these dark thoughts in your mind, in the back of your mind, you, you kind of tap into the collective unconscious of, of hmm. the culture you're embedded in. Definitely, definitely. There's, well, there's no doubt about it, is that like the dark part of me and the dark part of you is the same thing in some ways, yeah. you know, and we live in the same culture. And so yeah. it's going to manifest itself in a similar manner. Yeah. So you're saying the polarization that we're seeing right now, that we are speaking out, mm -hmm. it's not in the future we will act out that polarization. Well, if we don't, if we keep accelerating it, yeah. especially if we keep accelerating it with lies, yeah. you know, and, and this, this whole um, channel for rat's nest is like 90% lies, yeah. maybe more. And, you know, a lot of it's ideologically motivated lies, but it doesn't matter. It still lies. Like Kathy, as I said, there was virtually nothing she said in that interview that was actually coming from her, like, like a deep part of her, the soul of her. All persona. It was all persona. It was all persona. And, and, and all use of words in an in a expedient manner as tools yeah. to obtain, I think, probably probably status, dominant status, and reputation. Yeah.